Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the MarketHoops.com Basketball Show with the historian John Dodds and our marvelous producer, Jason Ruck. I'm Tom Pippins. We are brought to you by Moonlight Graham, modern dental benefits. Moonlight Graham, proud sponsor of the program. Our MVP, as always, is Craig Caston, J.D., Lloyd Walton, a part of the incredible history of the Al days as a player. Dr. Lloyd Walton, you've done it again, man. He's amazing. Well, one of the most popular players uh, in Marquette history with the fans, uh, one of the great point guards. And uh, he just came back uh, for the 50th reunion of uh, his team. They played the Final Four final game against North Carolina State back in Greensboro in 1974. And... Uh, what goes around comes around. Uh, Marquette this week played North Carolina State, and uh, we wanted to bring Lloyd on to talk about that. But uh, with his alma mater making their deepest tournament run in 11 years, it's a great way to start. Here he is, Lloyd Walton. Lloyd Walton, what a joy to have you on the show and right out of the box. One great point guard to another. Tell us why you like Tyler Kolick so much. Tyler Kolick, well, there are a myriad of reasons why you would like Tyler. Um, his leadership ability, uh, his skill level uh, to, be, to be able to do so many things, put the ball on the floor, create for his teammates, create for himself, can shoot the three. Uh, the coach on the floor, his basketball acumen is through the roof. Um, so that's just just to start. I think he's a winner. Um, and, and, and he brings so much. Particularly, I think, his overlook is his defense. He's very challenging defensively, never really gets out of position, can guard his man. And, you know, when you think about, you know, can you play at the next level? The question is always asked, uh, can he guard his man? And I would say, yes, he can. I'm sure you had these experiences where you just wouldn't let your team lose. And that was evident as Marquette got past Colorado, Kolick down the stretch, as you know, Lloyd. And, and now as we record, hoping a big win over the 11th seed NC State, to get to the Elite Eight. Either way, this team uh, advancing farther in the big dance, a longer dance than any time uh, in the last 11 years. How pumped are you about that as someone who was a foundational piece of all the success under the late and legendary Al McGuire? I'm excited, man. I'm through the roof, seriously. Uh, and I'll tell you this. I have a 90-year-old mother who's excited as any Marquette fan has ever been, Okay. <laughs> Uh, she will be, she'll watch and she'll call me at halftime and give me the scouting report, what they need to do better, what they should be doing. So uh, I hope family, um, my wife went to the university of Illinois. Uh, she's become a Marquette fan, even though she's pulling for Illinois, obviously to go as far as they can. But my whole family, man, we're into it. We're excited about it. We're cheering, cheering them on. I know you're a big fan of Shaka Smart. What is it that you saw when they hired him that made you a this is the guy, and obviously we can say that now quite confidently. Uh, absolutely. I think that I first met Shaka when he was at BCU, and uh, we used to have, uh, we meaning the NBA Players Association, we used to have our top 100 high school basketball camp there. And so I had a chance to meet him and had just brief conversations, but I loved the way that he went about his work in terms of his teams, how hard they play, how they play together. Um and what his values were. And when he was hired, when I found out he was hired, I think it was the same day that he was hired by Marquette, I immediately called the AD and said, man, you got the right person for the right job at the right place and right time. Uh, and, and a day later, I think I got a call from Shaka. And we just talked about what he wanted to do and uh, how I could possibly help, but more about what he wanted to do. And he wanted to bring Mar Marquette back to add the tradition that they've had many, many years that was absent. He wanted guys to come to his market to, to graduate, to, have, to, you know, to be academically sound, be able to move on in life after basketball. But he wanted to put a team on the floor that would really represent market values. You know, hard nose, play hard, do the right thing for the right reasons, be leaders in their own way. And he's done all of that, I would say, in his three-year tenure there. One of the great honors that uh, a market coach can really bestow on a former player is addressing the team, trusting them, and yeah, and you did that last fall. If you could just talk about what you said to the team and maybe if you're at practice, what you observed. Yeah, I was, uh, I was, I, I'm in Milwaukee, you know, three or four times a year uh, to, to visit with the Bucks and the Bucks players and my role with the NBA Players Association. 
So I would oftentimes just stop by uh, Marquette and um, see Shaka, have a little conversation. And I came by this summer. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but he said, hey, I want you to come back in, in about six weeks and, and speak to the team. I was like, oh, man, I'd love to. I'll drive up an hour and a half away, you know, spend some time with them. Remind you, this was uh, right before the 50-year anniversary. Who's going to even remember us? But then I thought, that's not as important as talking about what Marquette meant to me and what I think it stands for. And so I observed practice, and that's why I know that they play so hard. They play so together. They play together. They're very competitive. Um, and so afterwards, I talked about four of the greatest years of my life. It was four years that I spent Marquette, top state greatly. Um, what I learned people that I met. I came in, you know, maybe as a young and mature on the precipice of being a man and I left there as a man. I met some three important people that I'll never forget who wouldn't let me fail. And now it was Coach McGuire, Coach Raymond's and Rick McGarris. They refused to let me fail. Um, they refused to let any of their players leave there the way they came. You wanted them to leave with an education and a bright future and, and eyes wide open to what the possibilities can be. And that's the way I left. I can speak about me. That's the way I left. I was challenged to do better, to be better. And this, I didn't necessarily accept it right away, um, but I know how important that was to the development in my life and what I've been able to do since then. Uh, and I credit all that to be in the market in those three men. I'm sensing that you saw that same kind of care and concern for the young man first with Shaka Smart and the way those kids love him and vice versa. It's an unbelievable relationship that you must have if you want to wait, in my opinion. Those kids absolutely love Shaka, and Shaka actually loves those guys. And I'll tell you just something you guys probably already know. When I had a brief conversation with Shaka, and before that, I had a brief conversation with a few other people about to port. Okay, about all these players jumping in the portal and being able to leave one school and go to another. And uh, the conversation about Shaka not being in the portal was amazing to me. It really, really made me realize that he was really um, the, the guy for the job. But he talked about not going into the portal and bringing in a guy or two that would take the place of somebody he's gone to their home and spoke to their parents and recruited the total Mark Kevin's to place for them. Why would I bring somebody in to take their place? Right? How would I look if I did that to kids? And I'm, I'm telling you, man, the way life is now in, 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 in college sports, I can't imagine anybody not doing it is refused to do it at this point. And I would, trust me, there are enough players out there that he could have got an additional couple of players that probably would be saying they're going to win it this year. But he refuses to do that. They want to do the right thing for the right reasons. And I can't appreciate anything more than that when you're talking about Yahweh. Boyd, well, I want to get your opinion on uh, the, some of the other Marquette players. Uh, we talked about Tyler Kolick. Uh, talking about Cam Jones, that has, that's a, a left-hander with an interesting skill set. Another conversation that Shaka and I had when I came up to talk to the team was about um, how, how bad he wants it how bad he wants to be good, how bad he wants an opportunity to play at the next level. And Shoppers told me that he had had a conversation with him about uh, appreciating where you are in spite of where you want to go. And so a lot of my talk was about how you appreciate where you're at. You know, one of the important things that you have at your fingertips right now, because those other things that you aspire for, they will come. But you can never take for granted or forget where you're at at that moment in time. And so, looking at Cam, he does everything well. But I'll say this, and this is this is a little side note: watching him have to run the show for for Marquette, um, obviously was not the same as Tyler. Okay, Tyler makes everybody else's day that much easier. Uh, and that's not to say that um, that Cam couldn't do it. But it wasn't the same. The team didn't have the same confidence. The team didn't have the same fluidity that they had on Tyler on it. It's very similar 
to two guys that played together many, many years ago, Boyd Walton and Bush Lee. Um, I was the leader of that team, playing in the uh, And any time there was an issue, whether there was minor injury with foul trouble, then that was left up to Butch. Butch was a scorer. He wasn't necessarily one of those guys who wanted to run the show. It wasn't that he couldn't do it, but it was a different mindset. And that's what I see in those two guys. Well, I'm no expert, but I'll bet you Lloyd Walton, J.D., could have scored a lot more if he'd wanted. But he knew his role. He knew he was a leader. He knew the people around him, and that's why there was so much success. Lloyd, I was just captivated by your comments regarding the portal and and Shaka's commitment to his young men, who all seem to be fine young men, at least from a distance. Um, He talked about relationships. He always talks about it's the relationship, how close this team is. That's why we went as far as we did. And hopefully, again, as we record, they're going to move in uh, a little bit deeper. Uh, you, do you sense that as well, relationships between among these young men and their coach? Absolutely. Let me just say, so I think that relationships are critical uh, to success, uh, to life, period. Uh, even outside of the game, you want to have good relationships with good people. When people know how much you care, they are willing to go above and beyond what the requirement is. And they really care about each other as a team, coach to players, players to coach, to all their coaches. I got a chance to see and meet some of them uh, during my two visits. And it is a family atmosphere. They're cheering everybody. Everybody's cheering everybody on, uh, whether it's the team against you in scrimmages or what have you. Everybody wants players to be successful and do it the way that they practice and talk about. And that's uh, that's not so common. Um, you know, I, I think our team... Marquette plays together, but I see some teams that I can tell their best players are playing to get that contract and go to the NBA. I don't see that uh, in our team. Uh, any given night, uh, any one of those players will score 20 and everybody will be just as happy as the guy who's the leader of the team or the second leader of the team. And that's a special quality when you have that among your team. When I talk to opponent coaches, they say that Kolek is a elite passer, but they also say that the unicorn on the team is also the Godaro, who is an elite passer and ball handler from the post. And I think the biggest compliment I could give any Marquette player ever is to say he has a skill set that reminds us a little bit of Bo Ellis. Ah, okay. Um... In terms of ball handling, shot blocking, passing. He doesn't shoot like Bo, but yeah, he... <laughs> I, 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 I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I was, I was, I was sharing this uh, at our 50 year reunion dinner about uh, Bo's skill set that so many people forgot about. But when I look at Iowa, I watch Iowa, uh, actually I, I, I see some very similar qualities and skills. Uh, his ability to pass the ball to see the floor is unbelievable, honestly. Um, uh, and handle the ball. You know, from time to time, he's bringing the ball up. He's creating and making plays uh, for his teammates. You know, I wish he just had a little better shot, and he would have a football package. But for what they need, how he can uh, step out on the floor and defend, you know, perimeter guys, get back to his man, all those things are critical to what they do. Uh, I think he's a special player. I really do. Uh, he blocks shots. Uh, he helps out on defense when he doesn't necessarily have to. Somebody gets beat, he's always there. Uh, he's a special entity that they have on this team. Uh, and especially for what I can tell just in a brief conversation, he's a special young man. Mm-hmm. And boy, there's some bright kids there. Stevie Mitchell, I guess he's another one. I'd love to hear what you have to say about Stevie Mitchell, Lloyd. Is he the heart and soul? I mean, just, you know, it seems like, you know, and that's not to take away from anybody, but it, and it seems like he just loves, I see this smile on his face constantly. No matter what happens, you know, he's got this smile like, I'm, I'm competing. You know, I'm going all out, man. You know, sometimes you can be, sometimes you throw. But you can never question his desire to compete. That's something that I really and truly love about kids. You know, uh, Bo Ellis said one time that he thought the best defensive player he's ever seen at Marquette was Marcus Washington. He said he was the most underrated defensive player and um, Stevie Mitchell, you, there's certain players like Jimmy Butler, 
and Stevie Mitchell, where they just D it up and it's just different. It's a different standard. Uh, yeah. Um, I think about Marcus, my running mate, uh, that year we played North Carolina State for the championship. Um, whoever the best player was on the opposite team, without a question, Marcus was going to guard him. Uh, and he enjoyed it very much like Stevie. He actually enjoyed it and wanted the competition. He wanted the assignment. You know, give me that guy. Um, I would say that Marcus Washington, because he wound up guarding everybody that I know when I look at all the good players we played against at Marquette, and you think about the last team doing that, the last game that team played against, who guarded David Thompson? Marcus Washington. Mm. And until my beloved coach got technical fouls, we were, he was doing pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to get into that. The young man from nearby Brookfield Central High School, David Joplin. Boy, he's had a wonderful tournament run, hasn't he, Lloyd? He's had a very, very good run thus far. I think he kind of found his niche um, in, in a way that you don't necessarily want to find it. Um, I think he found it because of the injury, meaning that he got on, he had more of a role to play. Um uh, because back then, I think he just went along with uh, the way things were going. And now he's stepped up big time. He's made some big shots. Uh, he defends well. He brings a toughness uh, to that team. Uh, so you got all these pieces that are different besides just the, the desire to compete and wanting to win. Okay, at playing hard. Those are the main ingredients of those all of those guys that you've mentioned, which makes for a very, very tough team, a tough out for anybody that they play against. Uh, and that's what brings so much excitement when you think about why do you cheer for this team? Why do you want this team to win? They don't take days off. They don't take plays off. They come every night. And even the practices that I went to, they were practicing hard as you could imagine. And that, that too makes the game easier when you actually play it. But those are the characteristics that Shaka have instilled on this group with, in terms of the culture that they have now. This is a special team. I take nothing for granted about who they're playing and all that kind of stuff. I believe they're going to beat... Uh, North Carolina State, and if they do, they're going to have the same characteristics uh, shown that they've had throughout the year. That stubbornness, playing together, playing smart, right, and they're loving to compete. And he has little things that he does where everybody puts a little idea in a box, and then they put the box of ideas on, like, on the, the chair, and then they bring the box out, and they look at it, and see how everybody contributed uh, during that game, and they look at energy generating behaviors and there's voting and there's all sorts of things that are going on and and uh i'm just struck that you know you, you're you're dealing with egos and you're but you're dealing with young people too and it seems like rather than going for the five-star guy who's one and done like kentucky or maybe even texas where he was at he's going for the three and four stars that are going to stay here two three four years he can develop that rapport with them and that's the niche that Marquette could have. And you know, in the NCAA in March, that might be a, a great niche to have because these guys will be older and you're playing against an 18 year old kid who's getting tired at the end of the year. And when you're playing against a 22 year old man, it's a little different than an 18 year old teenager. I, I agree wholeheartedly. You, you see it throughout the tournament. Those teams who uh, maybe not be rated as high as other teams. But they got guys who have stayed together for three, four years, you, you know. And so, and they come in with the kind of experience of playing a lot of basketball against good players and good teams. So they're prepared. You look at the team that, you know, I look at Kentucky. They had a bunch of young kids that are super, super talented, were going to play in the NBA, but they had no experience to play in the tournament. And this, the team just wiped them out. They couldn't compete against them. I don't think at this point in time, I'm not saying it could never happen, but I don't think at this point in time, one of these five-star guys who wants to get to the league would be a good fit at Marquette. I mean, it has to be a special kind of individual, you know, to come in and to sacrifice, because it's about sacrifice too. Uh, sacrifice uh, some of the things that you ought to do on the floor for the greater good of the team. You know, go back to something. That's one of the things that I believed in. Coach McGuire didn't tell me to do it. Coach Raymond didn't tell me to do it. And Coach Majerus didn't tell me to do it. My idea was I wanted to win. I'd watch Marquette play. And I wanted to win. 
And I knew with all the good players that we had, we had six or seven All-Americans out of high school. Somebody was going to have to sacrifice. It was just common sense to me. If the ball is in my hand 70% of the time, then I'm the one who's going to make the sacrifice because the great and good is for all of us to win. And that's what I wanted to do more than anything else. A lot of people say, well, he, could, he couldn't shoot the ball. You think I forgot to shoot the ball as a 24-point score at high school, a 24-point score in junior college for a year? Hmm. No, not at all. I just feel like it was better for all of us to have somebody make the kind of sacrifice that was going to make the team better. And that's something that I think about with all teams. Who's going to make the greatest sacrifice to make the team better? And who's going to make small sacrifices that you know he wants to win? And that's the important ingredient to any team for success. So anybody who comes into Marquette without willing to do that at this point in time, the culture would be, you'd be, you just wouldn't fit into that kind of culture at the end. Uh, I'm very, very impressed with Chase Ross. I mean, it'd be wonderful, as you well know, Lloyd, if they had Sean Jones uh, out with the ACL, just so speedy in the depth. And, but this kid, Ross, man, alive, he steps up with three-pointers and defense and slam dunks. I was so impressed, again, especially in the victory over Colorado. Well, one of the things that happens um, is that uh, your team has to understand the process of preparing themselves. And then they have to have the desire uh, that they want to be better. And here's the real reason why you want to do that. It's because at some point in time, you might get a chance. And what you want to do is be ready, okay? So sometimes during the course of the season, I experience this particularly in the pros, but sometimes during the course of the season, you, you, you're playing two minutes here, three minutes there. You want to play more, but you never stop working. You're still coming to practice, working your butt off. You're staying late, working your butt off. You're still engaged into the conversations and scouting reports and things like that. Next thing you know, somebody goes down, foul trouble happens, and you're thrust into the position. Are you ready? And Ross has proved that he's paid attention. He's been engaged. He's worked on this game, and he's been ready for those opportunities. Ben Gold seems to be someone who is just tailor-made for Marquette. And to your point, Lloyd, somebody who will sacrifice. I mean, he can shoot it, especially he gets on a roll, but he's he's great at setting picks. His defense has improved. He's getting better around the boards. Do you like this young man and the potential that he has as he's grown from freshman to sophomore and hopefully beyond? He's going to be a really, really standout player, I believe, in the, in the future next year and going forward. Uh, obviously, yeah, he, he's, he's, his greatest asset probably is his ability to shoot the ball steps out on the floor, he shoots it with almost effortlessly. Um, but then he's getting so much smarter and comfortable in the game. Help defense, right? Setting picks. The little things that make the difference. You know, people don't realize, they only see the shot going in and who took it. But they don't see how the process of this really made it work. And he's one of those guys, I'm going to do the little things to the best of my ability to allow this guy to come off this paper and be able to shoot, maybe free as opposed to a hand in his face. And all those things are critical. He's up on the bench. He's cheering guys on when he's out of the game. All those little things are tangible because they make sure that the team stays together and everybody's still pulling the same way. Uh, so I have high hopes for, for, for Ben. Uh, I think he'll do extremely well next year. He'll be comfortable. He'll probably be thrust in to more of a leadership role, more of a score. Um, and so, yeah, he, he's, he's, he's performed quite well, and he's improved as much as you would think he would be able to if he wanted to. It seems like the Marquette offense, four out, one in, with Oso kind of coming out, it's kind of ingenious where they they can break it down into the most simple pick and roll, pick and pop, just set the pick, let the let the defense tell you where you're gonna go, whether you go down or whether you pop out. And it's just really difficult to guard given the talent. Guys can hit threes, guys can drive, and you got Kolick and Oso that kind of can hit everybody in the half court. So the, the ingredient with, with the way they play the offense is that, uh, first of all, it's confusing to uh, to the defense. If you're going to pick and roll, you're going to pick and pop, and you've got guys who can pass the ball. Uh, you pick and pop, and you throw it back to also, hey, he can pass the ball as well as anybody. There's a little doubt that happens when you go through these pick and rolls, and that second of doubt frees up a guy, and they make the right pass and guys in the right place. Um I think that they draw, they make a lot of teams 
think and rather than react. And if you have to think, you're probably going to be a step or two behind. Um, against North Carolina State, they're going to have to, I'm Marquette, we're going to have to run the big guy. The big, big guy reminds me of a little, a bigger version of Charles Barkley. I'll be here. They're going to have to run and, and get him tired. Uh, but once he's in there, he's a little bit of a handful. He's not going to be able to guard Colin or, or Cam coming off a of pick and roll. If he comes out, uh, then going around, it's going to be like layup line. Uh, if, if they if, if they stay back, they're going to be able to knock down threes or outside shots. This is tailor made because I don't think NC State has the the skill set, uh, particularly with their big guys, to be able to defend it. So this should be a great opportunity for us to get off on the right foot and keep them guessing and thinking. Because when they do, as I said before, they're going to be a step on. Lord, can the, the freshmen, Trey Norman and Zade Lowry, have had their moments, particularly when Kolick was on the sideline with the oblique injury. Do you like what they bring to the program in the future? Because as we well know, Oso and Cam and Tyler aren't going to be there forever. Yeah, um, you know, Ed, when you're young, you're just waiting for your turn, man. You're just waiting for an opportunity. And I always tell guys, particularly young guys, whether they're uh, and then be a college man. If you get one minute, work so hard that the coach wants to give you two. Uh, be so engaged that you know what your what your defensive assignments are, how to run the offense. And I think they pay great attention to what the details are, how to perform when they need when they in the game. And what happens though is that when when Tyler was out of the game uh, for, for those six games, what happened though was other guys got a chance and it built their confidence. So now we're going deep into the tournament. If something would happen like foul trouble or something like that, first of all, Shock is going to feel comfortable in putting one of them in. The second part of that, the player is going to feel comfortable because he's already been able to do it. And this is the important ingredient experience during the tournament. And I think they're well prepared with those two guys to come in if they need. This has been one of the most enjoyable interviews I've ever had. And I was blessed to hang around as a TV sportscaster for four decades, and J.D. has been around equally as long. Uh, thank you so very much, sir. Wish you and your beautiful bride and all your loved ones a blessed Easter. Thank you very much. Same to you guys. Have a good one. Go Marquette. Amen. What a gift it was to have Lloyd Walton on the MarquetteHoops.com basketball show brought to you by Moonlight Graham, proud sponsor of the program, Craig Caston. Thank you. Modern Dental Benefits, Moonlight Graham. John Dodds, as always, you have a terrific website. We do. Uh, please DVR the show, uh, Channel 24, 9 a.m. on Saturdays. If you miss it or you're out of the area, you can find it archived at our website, markethoops.com. We also have, uh, they keep you abreast as to future guests and topics on the show. Just sign up for our free newsletter. For J.D. and Jason, I'm Tom. Thanks for joining us on the show, everybody. God bless you, and go Golden Eagles!